Hey guys, it's Filmington, and today we're gonna to be doing a mail bin. Haven't done one of these videos in quite some time, but I've been amassing a bunch of stuff over the last two or three months, some of which is before the national, much of which is actually over the last three or four weeks, and I wanted to show that off in today's video. Um, as of filming this video, Joe Girardi was just formally anointed as a new Phillies manager. Uh, I kind of felt bad over what happened to him with the Yankees. Um, didn't get officially fired, but was let go or not extended in favor of Aaron Boone. And, you know, it's that was a must have been a bold move to make, given the amount of success that Joe Girardi had with the Yankees. And um, I think from the Phillies perspective that things can only get better um, when you have somebody like Girardi coming in. So um, also Neil Huntington, GM of the Pirates, was let go. And what a treacherous, treacherous job that guy did as the, uh, the guy running things over there. Um, especially when you look at Garrett Cole right now and how well he's been performing in the playoffs and in the regular season in Austin Meadows and there's probably a slew of other moves that are really just effed up. All right, so mail day starting with Ozzy Albies. Uh, pick this one up for about 20 bucks. This is his 2018 Series 1 Gold, number to 2018. Um, probably not a PSA 10 candidate, that's okay. Uh, Albies had a improved year, um, another season where he started out real hot and then he kind of faded down the stretch, but I think he's 22 or 23 years old, so he still has a lot of time to prove himself and get better. Um, everybody's talking about Acuna, and yes, Acuna will have the better career if he stays healthy, but Albies could be a very good player too. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to keep track of markets that I think could, I guess, um get larger or attract more collectors or fans and teams like the Astros right now you look at a team like the White Sox they could be a strong competitor years to come and their market could certainly get bigger um, the Braves definitely fall under that category as well they were a huge market in the 90s but I think they lost a lot of their fans over the last decade or two all right next up uh, if you watch my flipping video the first installment last week or this week uh, I talked about this card being the one that um, was ba basically my top pick for appreciation. And if you followed the uh, market for this card, you will have seen that since that video was published, people probably uh, went out to try to buy this for between $20 and $30. But I mean, right now it's probably closer to 40 bucks. So I apologize for that. That's probably part of a uh, result of, of my video and making that public. But I was able to get three of these. One more of them is on the way. Uh, for under $25 shipped. So, uh, you know, it's it's a card from 2014. It's a Bowman Chrome card that might have surface scratches that could not could potentially not be discernible from the scan. So it's okay if these aren't submission worthy to me. I, I don't care. But I'll definitely be checking these out uh, a lot closely. I knew from the purchase that the left-right centering was pretty good. That's kind of the, the main thing I was looking for at the time. Uh, all right, next up... Uh, couple cards that I don't usually buy, but from the 80s, um, Griffey, this was part of a, uh, a a customer that came in looking to, to sell stuff when I was at my dealer booth at my weekly show, and I was able to pick this up at 40 bucks, pretty good price, my only Griffey Gem in 10 card I own, and this was 130 bucks. thought it was a pretty good price, Bonds, I think, maybe not Next year, maybe not the year after that, but I think at some point, maybe a new generation of writers comes in and voters, and uh, it's just tough to ignore what he did on or off steroids. And yes, that does open up the Pandora's box for other guys like McGuire and Sosa and Andy Pettit and Clemens getting considered. But I mean, we're all making a big deal about Mike Trout winning his potentially winning his third MVP this year when Bonds won what six more? Was it six or eight? Just a really ridiculous player. And I say that as a Bonds hater, not a big fan. So I thought that was a pretty good price. Uh, of course, he also has many other rookie cards. 86 Don Russ. Uh, if you want to get one that has a, a lower pop percentage, 87 Don Russ. That's not really his true rookie. Uh, 86 Tops traded is another decent one to target. A lot of people also go after 87 Tops, which um, it's tough to find those ones in PSA 10s or, or 86. Um, all right, next up. This is a guy I threw a dart on. Willie Adames, uh, maybe a symptom of FOMO, maybe not the best timing, but when you get a blue refractor autograph for 50 bucks shipped, BGS 9.5, now it's a min gem and it's got 9 centering, so 
lot of people won't like that, but blues are very sought after. Blue first, Bowman Chrome autographs. And um, I don't know how much he's going to improve offensively next year or ever, but I know the defense this year, he showed some real improvements. That gives him a nice floor. I think his war was actually close to 4.0, uh, still 22 or 23 years old. I'm not sure if I'm going to focus uh, feature this guy on a feature flipping installment, but um, I'm certainly thinking about it. And, oh, man, we didn't get a, a tops update black or just Topps flagship black rookie card and a gem mint grade, you know it's going to be a low pop card. And um, who knows, if I hit on this guy, that would be pretty sweet. And uh, may, might make a little bit of money, but we'll see. I'm a Willie Adames fan for now, but there certainly are some flags. And um, those cards would be going for a lot more last year when, um, he, you know, if another year of struggling offensively didn't kind of pass by, which is what happened this year. <clears throat> Next up, 2018 Top Series 2, Glaber, uh, picked up a 10, another 10, a 9, and I think 5 raw cards. These ones, I, I was pretty pleased with my timing on. Picked them up, like, I think at the beginning of the ALCS, before he had that 5 RBI game, and... People really started to take notice and think about, well, which is the best car to pick up? And a lot of people said, 2018 Top Series 2, look at what happened to Acuna. So I was happy to get these at the time for under 60 bucks raw. Um, meanwhile, Acuna raw card is going for about 275 So for less than a quarter, I thought it was a great price to pay. If you have to pay more than 70 for these, I don't know if that's a good buy. Something else I, I like about these raw cards is that... If you're not dealing with a card that's exploded yet, exploded me, meaning like in raw value, it's selling for $75 plus, there is a higher likelihood that people will forego grading for a quicker uh, quicker sale. So some of these, and it's it's true, um, not all of them, maybe maybe one or two of the five could be gem in 10 candidates. But now if you're to look at eBay, I think people will definitely look twice and reconsider, uh, oh, maybe I should send this to the PSA. I mean, the PSA 10s are going for more than 250. Um, which is what I almost paid for these. I think two twenty-five to two thirty each. Um, and the nine was seventy bucks. A lot of the times when I try to determine what's a better deal, a nine, a raw, a raw version, or a ten, I'll look at a comparable card. In this case, the best example was the Acuna. I try to assess what the multiplier is based on comps. Um, so maybe at the time Acuna's PSA 10, you know, I'm just kind of spitting out um, stuff for for an example. I don't know if these are facts here, but PSA 10 Acuna might have been going for 900 bucks. Raw Acuna might have been going for about 275, like I said. Um, so you're getting a multiplier of not 4x. So if you can get a um, a Glaber for for 55 dollars when his PSA 10 is going for more than 220. Uh, then you're paying less than 25% on that raw, and it's a might be a better value relatively to get that raw card once you're to compare those and you know cross cross reference the two cards within the same set that are very similar. All right, this one this was probably a uh, symptom of FOMO. You know I'm not trying to over exaggerate what I do, what my timing is. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, sometimes when you start to deviate away from your strengths, my strengths being, you know, I, I like the, the tops, parallels, and flagship. I like the Bowman Chrome autographs, uh, graded and raw. But tops, chrome, gold, autographs aren't something that I usually go after. Um, can be a great alternative. And in some cases, it can definitely pay off dividends. But um, I probably paid a little bit more than I should have, given that I purchased this probably a week after I purchased the Series 2. So we're talking like... A lot of people thought the Yankees were going to the World Series. A lot of people thought that Glaber Torres would win ALCS MVP if they won that, you know, uh, conference championship, which they did not. Um, series, but um, but yeah, you get the point. Um, I'd be happy to sell this and get my money back, or even lose a little bit. Can't win all the time, guys. You certainly can't. And if you you hold everything uh, with a flipping strategy, then you're going to have some obsolete inventory and you're likely to lose even more. So sometimes it's about minimizing your down, downside risk. And that would be the play for me on the Glaber, probably, um, unless I can afford to hold on it for a bit longer, which I haven't really thought about. And I'd have to look at what I own and, um, what my exit strategies are across all those little components of what I own. 
All right, next up, uh, this guy, haven't done a ton of research on him, but I know he's been climbing the top 100 prospect list. He might even be in the top 50 now. Helio Ramos, 22-23 uh, year old hitter, I think. Let's verify that. I uh, can't verify. Oh, 99. Okay, so he's still fairly young. We're talking uh, just turned 20. And, um, of course, you also have Joey Bart in that system. You have Marco Luciano. Um, I'd say it's like an average market for a, a crappy team. And uh, you see this is a true Gem Mint Plus. This was selling for... I bought it at a show, and the comps for a regular BGS 9.5 were 100 bucks, and I got this for 100 bucks. So... Still have to look into him more. Um, not sure exactly what he did this year other than he improved and he um, caught some people's attention. And um, and yeah, all right. Next up, Wander Franco. Uh, this guy's might be the last time people have an opportunity to buy him cheap. Uh, after Luis Robert gets called up next year, all eyes will be on the 18-year-olds. Him... Julio Rodriguez, Marco Luciano. Uh, you can pick up nine and a half examples of this for in the, the low to mid 500s. Paid a little bit extra to get that 10 edge subgrade. Um, PSA 10s are going for quite a bit more. I think over 700, uh, <clears throat> which is a multiplier. I just couldn't justify for a, for a modern card, um, even though it is Wander Franco. So, you know, it is the Rays, uh, but they have had players in the past to, to carry Hobby Love. Um, well, of course, Wander Franco starting with him. Evan Longoria, Carl Crawford at some point probably had some Hobby Love. Um, to get that, you know, you sort of have to be a superhero. So, you know, one could look at Austin Meadows, who I recently recommended in a flipping video and say that, well, he might not be a superhero, so he might not ever capture the attention he deserves, but, you know. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt and others have, have proven over time that they can command some love, although potentially being perpetually undervalued. So, so yeah, Wanda Franco, uh, this is, I think I own three, and I might be showing another one in this video soon, of his autograph. Uh, next up, probably the best, just turned 23, the, the best hitter under the age of 24 that's left-handed in the game. Uh, Juan Soto would obviously be number one in the background there. And uh, Devers really showed a ton this year to me as a Red Sox fan. You know, people might gloss over his season end statistics because he's not going to finish top five in the MVP voting. I don't think he will. Some people think he might, he might, but I don't think he has the geek stats yet. Still learning. Um, this year, over 80 extra base hits, th uh, 300 plus average, a ton of doubles, a ton of opposite field home runs. I really like what I see here as defense also improved. Hopefully he can keep that weight off. Um, he actually stole a few bases this year too. It wasn't wasn't that efficient, but um, everything this year I saw, I loved. Um, I don't think any Red Sox fans saw this coming this quickly, but um, this could be a guy that we look at years from now and we're like, wait, the purple BGS nine autos were only selling for two hundred bucks because I think I got it for about maybe, maybe it was like two twenty. Um, subgrades are pretty good. Eight and a half corners, which kind of sucks, but what can you do, guys? Number to two fifty. Next up, um, another pretty decent purchase. Uh, if you followed a lot of my videos, you know that I PC Mike Trout. Um, I like to try to hold his cards more than the other ones I own. I think he's going to win his third MVP this year, which I mentioned earlier in this video. And this is the first 2011 Topps Finest card I have. This is the Refractor. I picked this up raw at a show, and... Um, I asked the guy, how come he didn't submit this PSA? Because, you know, you always wonder that when you have a guy that has an inventory at a show that where half the stuff is, is slabbed. But um, I think he was afraid of the, the surface stuff going on up top here. But I'm okay with that. And um, I might end up submitting it anyways. Potential nine or eight and a half. If you ask me, the edges and corners are sharp on here. Hopefully it hasn't been trimmed. <laughs> All right. Sweet car, though. A lot of shine. Another pretty big pickup, Seth Beer. Um, it's always fun to prospect. I try not to go too crazy into the guys that haven't established themselves in the um, in 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 um, the deep, I guess, like levels of minor league ball or the major leagues. It's it's just a big risk that usually I just don't think it's worth taking, especially when everybody saw what happened to Acuna 
Soto, Tatis, and they think that they can find that next guy. So any possible like discount is it's almost already assumed that these guys are going to make it. Um, but Seth Beer is a guy that I thought was pretty cheap. Base autograph for about $40, $45. Uh, this one is going to be about a times 13 multiplier, which is basically what I paid. And um, this, is, is, this doesn't have a first on it, but it is his first Bowman Chrome autograph that will be considered years to come by investors and collectors because the first autograph he had was in a mega box, which isn't really considered his, his first. So even though it doesn't say first, it's still his first. Um, and it should sell for such. He's slow. Uh, a lot of pundits don't think that he'll ever be an average or above average first baseman, which is an issue because he was traded to the Diamondbacks from the American League. Uh, struggled a little bit, I, I believe, double A, but um, a guy that has massive power potential. The hobby loves that. Um, look at Pete Alonso. He, I think he hit like 58 home runs in a year with LSU. Um, still has a lot to prove. I love the color match with the Houston uniform and the orange. And um, I guess time will tell with this guy. Bought this on a Facebook group. And uh, you always have to be wary with that. The guy seemed honest. He was Canadian. <laughs> and uh, he said it was a beauty. He didn't even have the card in his possession yet, which I actually kind of liked. He got it in a break. Um, if I was to do this again, I'd probably be like, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll like, work out the deal later when you actually have it in your possession. He takes some better pictures. But... Um, from the video of the break, couldn't see much. A couple corners aren't perfect. Surface, there's a little scratch somewhere, but I think it's definitely nine material. And that's all you can hope for when you're buying a card like this on Facebook or even on eBay or on Comp C. So I'm cool with that. Maybe I'll, uh, Beckett's going to be at a show I'm, I'm uh, going to be attending next week. So maybe I'll do the rock card review to see what happens. Um, the only problem is autograph streaky. So. Maybe PSA is a better fit, right? All right. And of course, I wouldn't get the autograph graded in either case. I also got some stuff from Propstein, so this will be really cool. Oh, no. All right. Check this out, guys. Raphael Devers. Raphael Devers. Raphael Devers. Raphael Devers. Raphael Devers. And Wander Franco. Nice little surprise at the end, huh? Oh, man. Beautiful card. I already talked about that one. And I talked about my affinity for Raphael Devers. Let's see what else I have in here. So somebody auctioned a bunch of these off with the same ending time. Uh, it was, uh, I think, last week on Sunday night. So sniped a bunch of these. Made sure I had the budget for it. And we got ourselves a Corey Seager. Look at that. So this, this is a little bit different of a purchase. Um, ships, a lot, of, a lot of people would argue that the ships already sailed with him and how good he could be and... Kind of, he was okay this year. I guess he was probably stronger in the second half. But I just love the look of this card. I used to have Bregman in, in, in gold and orange, actually, and red of the USA. And I, I was sad I uh, sold the Bregmans, and now they're too expensive to buy. So um, I uh, I don't know. I thought this was a pretty good value. I got this for like 120 130 bucks Two years ago... This card with Corey Seager was going for double or triple what Alex Bregman was. Um, now, it is a sticker autograph. Even though it says first Bowman card, most people consider 2012 is true first Bowman Chrome autograph. But um, And I think that that would sell by a factor of like times six or times eight, the equivalent. So if I was to own a 2012 BGS 9 gold Seager, I'd be going for quite a bit more. But I don't know. Just kind of like it. And a uh, shout out to Pepino, Pepino man. Ah. Next up, a few cards I won from Mike O's auction. Good guy in the community. Check him out. You probably already check him out if you check me out. But there's a chance you don't check him out. So check out Mike O. No spaces. Um, I don't know. Usually I don't waste my money on small cards like this, but or spend my money. You know, I don't want to offend anybody. But probably did it for this. Got an Acuna. I assume it's. Not like gem worthy, but you never know. Who knows? 
Um, gem copies of this. Oh, it actually looks really nice. Sell for about 32 bucks. And I think I got it for about 10 or 12. Uh, I think I spent like 25 total and everything. Probably paid a little bit more, but sometimes it's good to support the community. And uh, this one actually looks really nice. So this is going to be a submission candidate. He tore apart the Astros too in the, uh, the playoffs. Crazy when guys break out at age like 28 or whatever, however old he is. He's a utility player for so long. It's like marginal, like we could cut this guy at any time and it wouldn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, next up, I uh, got a few things. It's part of a little birthday present from Bowman1951. Sports cards, adventures, whatever. Longest YouTube name on on YouTube. <laughs> Gave me some uh, numbered uh, Bregman cards. A little gold Future Stars. Got his black ones. Really nice. So maybe I'll submit a couple of these. Haven't looked them over. Uh, I'm not sure where he bought them from, but this is his rookie, of course. This, this is pretty cool, even though it's a Bowman Platinum. Number 250. Sweet card, lots of nice shine on that one. So thanks, thank you, Jeff, for that. And then uh, I got my first ever real care package from somebody I don't know. Uh, I don't want to make this into like a care package channel because I have so much else to focus on. But I really appreciated the gesture. He lives in Scotland too, so I had to bring this up. So, you know, he asked me, uh, he said he likes what I'm doing in the explosion box, and he asked me to. I want to show his address, but I could probably edit that out anyways. But if, he, if I could send him back some packs, maybe some newer packs. He's, he's also said he was a big Jeter fan. Um, so and he sent me a lot of good stuff, guys. So I had to send him back something good. I know he paid a lot for shipping. Um, I had to pay a lot for shipping back, but that's cool. Hobby's not just about being selfish. It's about giving. Uh, and, um, I sent him a, hopefully you got this Alan already. If you're watching, uh, a couple weeks ago, I sent you a rookie card explosion box sold out volume 10. So hopefully you did well there. And in that I included a bunch of Jeter cards and one of them was his 93 tops, uh, rookie, which actually was really centered left, right pretty well. So hopefully you enjoy that, man. And I know with the explosion box, you just asked for newer packs and you probably got two older ones, but hopefully that's okay. Just figured it was just easier to send you that. And you already brought up the explosion box and he sent me a lot of good stuff. Uh, Bowman platinum. Of course, this is, um, the year with trout. So I'm thinking like, oh, this is pretty sweet. 2010 Bowman platinum coal. Oh man, that's gotta be hot card right now. I think Springer might've been there too. And then he sent me this trout guys. I was I was stunned when I saw this that somebody just sent me this and it's actually in really good shape, I think. So, awesome. Awesome. Look at that. Sweet. Thank you so much, Alan. And he sent me this from what well, looks to be the same set. It's a McCutcheon game worn jersey autographed, numbered, I believe, to 150, or I'm not sure if that's numbered, but sweet card. Uh, sent me some other stuff. A lot of rookies. He knows I like rookies. Kershaw rookie. A Posey in there. Freeman Springer, like I said. This is 2018 Bowman Chrome Longoria. Got a numbered to 99, I believe. Noah Syndergaard, Topps Chrome rookie. That is awesome. Um, this Sandoval, number to 75. Tim Linscom, number to 500. Charlie Blackman, autograph, um, number to 50. Looks like looks to be possibly his rookie card. No beard there. Chris Sale. This guy. Josh Donaldson. And look at that. Blue, shiny, numbered auto. So, all right, guys. I think that's pretty much it for what I picked up. Um, buying a lot of wax, too. So, here's some stuff that might be featured in a future rookie card explosion box. But, uh, yeah, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you liked what you saw. Like, comment, subscribe. Filmington out.